Hi, I'm Chuck Hawley from West Marine, and today I'm joined by Kevin Osborne. This video is part of the West Advisor Do-It-Yourself Project Series, where we give you information on how to do common boat projects or how to select important boat products. Today's topic is solar charging and solar panels, how solar charging works, what it can do for you, and how to select a solar installation that works for your boat. I became a believer in solar energy for boats back in 1980 when I sailed my 24-foot boat to Hawaii in the single-handed Transpac race. My boat didn't have an inboard engine, so I had to rely on a single solar panel to recharge my battery and in turn to power my autopilot, interior light, navigation light, and VHF radio. When I pulled into Hanalei Bay 17 days after leaving San Francisco, I had fully charged batteries and my electrical system had worked perfectly. So what is solar charging best used for? For small boats, a solar panel can be used to keep the battery fully charged when the boat is sitting on a trailer or sitting at or slip. All batteries self-discharge and a small panel can eliminate the problems caused by dead batteries. Using a panel to maintain a battery is also useful on bigger boats that are on a mooring. Without shore power, these boats need a way to keep their batteries charged. Since solar panels put out pure DC power, they are excellent chargers as long as they have a regulator in the circuit. Cruising and racing sailboats can also use solar panels to augment or replace other charging sources. This Express 37 has been to Hawaii three times in the double-handed division of the West Marine Pacific Cup. Their main source of power for those crossings has been this single big panel. You can see this is a monocrystalline panel with big five inch diameter cells. This probably puts out five or six amperes all the way to Hawaii. And it's mounted on the push bit so it can be hinged. Now this is kind of a neat arrangement because when you're going to Hawaii, you want to drop the panel down in the morning because you're going towards the west so you want to point it towards the east. And then as the sun comes overhead during the noon, you pull it up horizontally. And then you get as much sun as you can by pulling it up like this until you get too much shadowing from your sails. This is an ideal way for cruisers who don't want to permanently mount panels to nonetheless have a secure way of supporting them and to also aim them so they get maximum output. One of the key features that I like about solar charging is that it's entirely silent, unlike propulsion engines and generators. Nothing ruins a quiet anchorage quite like the noise from an adjacent boat's gen set when you're trying to enjoy the solitude. Solar panels won't wake the neighbors and won't heat up the cabin when you're in the tropics like your engine will. Great point, Kevin. It can get hot enough when you're cruising in the tropics without having the additional heat of a diesel engine in the middle of the day. Now let's talk about some basic electrical terms that will help you understand the output of a solar panel. The panels we're discussing were designed for charging 12 volt batteries. And while they might have a voltage of 20 volts or so with no battery in circuit, they're engineered to provide their power at the voltage that 12 volt batteries require for full charging. Panels are measured either in watts, or amps, or both. For our discussion, we'll be talking amps, since most boaters have an idea of how many amp hours their battery capacity is, or how many amp hours they use in a day while cruising. We also use a simplifying assumption, and that is that the panel will put out its maximum output for five hours a day. As they say in the car commercials, your mileage may vary, but that's a rule of thumb that has worked well for estimating panel output. To optimize the power you generate from your solar panels, there are a few simple rules to keep in mind. First, the panel should be as perpendicular to the incoming sun's rays as possible. Well, this is where we're gonna do a little experimentation during the video. We've got a flexible solar panel, in this case, a 450 milliamp solar panel. We've got a special amp hour box. Now, this isn't actually designed for the marine environment. This will read out in watts. It'll look at the total uh, watt hours that are charged back into a battery. It'll read out in amps and in volts, all on one compact display. Now, right now, we're going to get direct sunlight on the panel and take a look at the voltage. It should be around 22 and a half volts. Now, that seems like a lot, but that's because there's no load on the panel. There's no battery in the circuit. Now, what we can do is connect it up to this little, this is roughly a 30 amp hour battery. And we can see what this, this says. We've got three watts of charging, 12.9 volts, so it's slightly higher than normal, and what does this say? Uh, 0.2 amperes. And if I get this out even more perpendicularly in the sun, you can see it's going between three watts and four watts. 
And the more directly I point it into the sun, the more power I get. As I tilt it away from the sun, I'm down to two watts. I point it towards the sun, I'm back up to four watts. What does this prove? Well, what we were saying before, you want solar panels perpendicular to the sun. You want the brightest possible sun. You don't want cloudy days. You don't want shadowing, and even a small amount of shadow will make the power go down dramatically. And finally, you want to keep your panels cool. I'm just going to put my arm over this, and you can see it goes from 2 watts. Pull my arm away, now we're back up to 3 watts, and back up to 4 watts. So just a 10 or 15% shadowing has a dramatic effect on the panel's output.